All right, we're adding two fractions in here. So the first thing we got to do is get a common denominator, an LCD, the least common denominator. Before we can get a common denominator, we're going to factor each of the denominators. So we're factoring a squared minus a. They both have an a in common. That's the GCF. So we're going to factor out the a. So we're left with a times a minus 1. And then these two, the second denominator, they also both have an a in common. So we're left with a times a plus 1. So our LCD has to have all the factors of all of our denominators. So it has to have, oops, it has to have a, it has to have a minus 1, and it has to have a plus 1. So we have to multiply our first fraction by whatever the LCD um, the part of LCD that the denominator is missing. So that's a plus 1 over a plus 1. That I already put in the denominator. And our second fraction is missing the a minus 1. So we're going to multiply top and bottom by a minus 1. We're really not multiplying by anything other than 1. So multiplying by 1 does not change a number. Okay, so now we're left with, I'm going to distribute this a to a plus 1. So we get a squared plus 1 times a is a. And we're going to distribute this for the second fraction. I'm just going to put um, LCD just for the sake of time. Okay, we distribute the a by a minus 1, so we're, we get a squared minus a. So now everything is over the, our LCD, and we just come, come, we put everything that's on our numerator all over one fraction bar. Okay, so this is a plus sign, so we don't have to worry about distributing this. If it was a negative, we would have to worry about distributing it to both of the terms, to all the terms in our, the fraction that follows it. But it's a plus, so we can just do it without thinking. So a squared plus a squared is 2a squared. And the plus a and the minus a cancel each other. So now I'm going to write the LCD. So since these three factors in the denominator, we have three factors. We have a, a minus 1, and a plus 1. This a and one of these a's in the numerator, they cancel each other out. We can reduce that. Because, because these are three products. If it was a plus something, we couldn't do it, but it's a times a minus 1, so we can reduce the a's. So we are left with 2a over a minus 1 times a plus 1. We could leave it like that, or we could, we could multiply the a minus 1 by the a plus 1, and we would get 2a over a squared minus 1. But it's fine to just leave it as, um, leave it in factor form. Okay, now we go to this next question. This is called a complex rational expression. That means fractions within fractions. So we're going to reduce, we're going to simplify it 
by getting rid of the fractions that are within our fractions and just ending up with just one fraction. So the way we're going to do that is where we look and see we have two terms in our, let's look at our big fraction, this fraction bar, this right here. Okay, the numerator of that fraction has two terms. That's our first term, x over y, and our second term is y minus x. See, these two terms are separated by the minus sign. The denominator of our big fraction has two terms also, x over y and the 1. We look at these four terms and we look at all of their denominators. So that means y, x, y, and really this 1 is over 1, if you want to say, so the 1. We come up with an LCD for these four denominators. Remember, LCD has to have all the factors. So it has to have a y and it has to have an x and a y which we already accounted for, and a 1, which we don't have to worry about. So the LCD would be xy or yx. So we're going to multiply these four terms by that LCD. And the reason why we do that, you'll see in a minute, it makes it very nice in that all the denominators, these four denominators, they'll all be gone. You'll see. So we're going to multiply this term by xy. Multiply this term by xy, multiply this term by xy, and multiply this term by xy. This is legal to do this because what we really did is we multiplied the numerator of this big fraction by x times y, okay, and the denominator by x times y. Well, x over xy over xy is really 1. So we really have multiplied this big fraction by 1, which is not changing the fraction. Now watch. What we're going to do, this xy is really in the numerator. This y is in the denominator. We're going to reduce that y in the numerator with the y in the denominator. Okay, now we're going to reduce the x in the denominator with the x in the numerator. The y in the denominator with the y in the numerator. And there's nothing to reduce here. Okay, so now we're left with, we don't have any more denominators with, within, we don't have any more fractions within this fraction. Okay, so now we multiply x times x is x squared minus y times y is y squared over x times x is x squared minus 1 times xy is xy. So now no more denominators. All of the denominators are gone. We just have one fraction. Okay, so now we, fact we want to simplify. So we factor the top. The top is called the difference of squares. That gets factored into the first minus the second times the first plus the second over these two terms in the denominator they both have an x in common that's our GCF so we factor out the x and we're left with x minus y now we look to see if we can reduce any of the factors we sure can okay we have an x minus y here and an x minus y here so we can reduce that. So we're left with x plus y over x. That's our answer. Do not get tempted to reduce these x's because the top has two terms. These are not factors. These are the x plus y is together as one thing. You can't reduce the x with the x because you also have to divide the y with the x. Okay, so you just leave this as you see it. It's, you can't simplify it any further.